Thank you for joining our Dash Trader Tips video. In today's video, we'll be going over the different types of stop orders offered by the Dash Trader. Stop orders are buy or sell orders that are sent to the market once your stock goes up or down to your stop or trigger price. Generally, it's used to limit a loss or protect a profit on the trade. Although not as common, stop orders may also be used to enter into a position, as we'll explain later. On a long position, traders will normally place their sell orders above the current market to exit their position at a higher price. A sell stop order enables you to place a sell order at a price lower than the current market to protect you from further movement against you. Short positions are just the opposite. Traders will normally place a buy order below the current market, hopefully to exit their positions at a lower price. A buy stop order will allow you to place a buy order at a price above the current market to protect you from further movement against you. Although we've explained the concept of stop orders in the context of exiting positions, you may also use the stop order feature to enter a position. The orders are set up exactly the same, except that you don't have a position in the stock at the time you're placing your stop order. Your position is created when the stop order executes. Although not as common, it is a strategy that some traders use. Das Trader offers four different types of stop orders. Stop Market, Stop Limit, Trailing Stop, and the Range Order. We'll run through an example of each type in the following sections. To help us illustrate the different types of stop orders, we'll be using our current long position in Intel of 1,000 shares with an average price of 2170. Prior to setting up any stop order, you'll need to first fill in the parameters of your order box. First, we'll make sure our volume is set. For our example, we'll set it to 1000, the position of our stock. For the price, we can leave it blank, as we'll set the trigger price in our stock configuration window. We'll set our route to stop. And we'll also fill in our time and force conditions, if any and our account. Once all these are set, we're ready to configure our desired stop order. Stop Market Orders Stop Market Orders will send the market order for execution once the stock hits your stop or trigger price. Since we have a long position in Intel, we'll be setting up a sell stop market order. This means our trigger price will be set up below the current market. If Intel should go down to our trigger price, a market sell order will be sent to the market to exit our position. Since the parameters in our order box is set, we can go ahead and click on sell to bring up our stop order configuration window. For order type, we'll select market. After that, all we need to do is set our trigger price. For example, we'll set a trigger price of 50 cents below our entry price. So I'll input 2120. Once we click on OK, our order is sent and pending in the market. So what we've done here is set up a stop order so that if Intel goes down to 2120, our stop order will be activated and a market sell order will be sent to the market to exit our position. Stop Limit Orders Stop Limit Orders will send a limit order to the market once your stock hits your stop or trigger price. Since we have a long position in Intel, we'll be setting up a sell stop limit order. This means our trigger price will be set up below the current market, and if Intel should go down to our trigger price, a limit order to sell Intel will be sent to the market. Since the parameters in our order box is set, we can go ahead and click on sell to bring up our stop order configuration window. Under order type, we'll select limit. Thereafter, we'll need to fill in two prices. The first is our trigger price. This is the price that will determine when your limit order will be sent to the market. We'll input 2120 as our trigger. Next, we'll set our limit price for the sell order. I will input a price of 2115. You may input any price you wish here, but for this example, I'll give myself a five cent cushion below the trigger to help ensure my execution. Once we click on OK, our order is sent and pending in the market. Now, should Intel go down to 2120, 
our stop order will be activated and the limit order to sell Intel will be sent to the market with a limit price of 2115. Trailing Stop A sell trailing stop order allows you to set your stop price at a fixed amount below the market with an attached trailing amount. As the market price rises, the stop rises by the trail amount, but if the stop price falls, the stop loss price doesn't change and a market order is submitted when the stop price is hit. Here's an illustration to help explain the trailing stop. Here we have a stock with a current price of $20. If we were to place a 50 cent sell trailing stop order, our stop price would be pegged in 1950. Should the market go up to 2025, our new stop price will move up to 1975, which is 50 cents below the market. Now should the stock retract in price, say back to the original $20 price, the stop would remain at 1975. This technique is designed to allow the trader to specify a limit on the possible loss without setting a limit on the possible gain. Buy trailing stop orders are the mirror image of a sell trailing stop order and are most commonly used with a short position. Again, once our parameters are set, we'll hit the sell button to bring up our stop order configuration window. On the order type, we'll select trailing. And if you note on the top here, the trailing orders are not available for good to cancel orders. Also, there's no option for a limit order. The trailing stops are only executed with a market order once triggered. So that being the case, all we'll need to do is fill in our trailing amount. We can either set it in terms of percentage or dollar amount. If we wanted the trailing amount to be in terms of percentage, we would put the amount followed by a percentage sign. To set it in terms of dollar, we would input a dollar amount such as 50 cents, which is what we'll use for our example. Once that's set, we'll hit OK to send the order. Now we see our pending order in the open orders window. It will remain open until Intel moves against us at any time by 50 cents or more and will liquidate our position with a market order to sell. Range order. Range order is a great feature that allows you to set both a stop and target price simultaneously. If either of those prices are triggered, the other is immediately canceled. To help illustrate, we have a long position with a current market price. We have our sell or target order above and a stop below, both sell orders. Should the market go up to our sell or target price, our stop order will be immediately cancelled. Conversely, should the market go down to our stop price, our sell or target order will be immediately cancelled. This is also referred to as a one cancels the other order or a bracket order. It's also a great tool in helping to automate your trading strategies. Once the parameters in our order box is set, we can hit the sell or buy button to bring up our stop order configuration window. We'll be hitting the sell button in this case as our example is dealing with a long position. Under order type, we'll select range. A quick glance at the note here reminds us that a market order will be sent once our price is triggered. Being that this is a sell range order, the low price will be our stop price. The high price will be our target that hopefully exits our position at a profit. For example, I'll be setting my range at a price of 50 cents below and above my entry price. Since I entered my position at 2170, I'll set my stop price or low price at 2120 and my target or high price at 2220. Once my prices are entered, I'll hit OK to send my order. Now we see our order here pending in the market. Should Intel go up to 2220 or down to 2120, a market order to sell Intel would be activated to exit our position and any orders relating to the range order will be cancelled. Montage style. In our previous example, we were using the default montage style. The default style requires a stop order window to help configure your stop orders. But if you use stops frequently, you may also opt to use the stop order montage style that helps to place stop orders a little quicker. To do this, do a right click on your order box, go to style and select stop order. Now you can see that there is a change to our order box 
which now gives you the ability to fill in the parameters of your stop order without the use of a stop order configuration window. Now we can set our stop type and trigger price right on the order box and hit the cell to send our order in one step instead of two. This stop order montage style is also required if you wish to use hotkeys to send your stop orders. Please see our stop order hotkey video for more information on this. Thank you for joining our video on stop orders. We hope the information will help to enhance your trading strategies and your experience with the Dash Trader. Once again, thank you for joining us.